Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Long Walk Talks. My name is David Hensley. I'm the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and it's really too bad that I wasn't recording the conversation we had immediately prior to the start of this episode, because uh, what turned into Stan visiting Jurassic Park went ho- hilariously off the rails. And ASMR videos featuring raptors. Yes. <laughs> we could edit it in. Audio, sound, music, <laughs> raptors. Uh, alongside me, as always, are my two co-hosts, uh, Long Walk VP Stan Wilson Lee. Peace. And Long Walk Associate Producer Chris Barnes. Howdy. And we are special guest less for this for these uh, next two episodes. We're unsupervised. You're stuck with us. <clears throat> because schedules are difficult. And it's hard enough getting the three of us into the same room, much less adding a fourth person into the mix. So this uh, episode is going to be all about things that make us feel good. I took this, <laughs> stop it, Stan. I took this I idea really from hard. one of my favorite podcasts, A Storm of Spoilers, which is ostensibly a Game of Thrones podcast. But considering we haven't had a new episode <clears throat> of Game of Thrones in over a year, they are doing what they call an off season tour. And one of their episodes about two months ago was called Good Vibes. And it was during the heat of the Brett Kavanaugh trial trial, whatever you want to call it. Confirmation. Confirmation, thank you. If you want to be accurate. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, they did a whole episode just, we're pissed off, so let's talk about things that make us feel good. And I listened to that and I thought, I like that idea a lot. I'm going to steal it. So today we are going to each discuss three things that we turn to multimedia related to cheer us up whenever things get us down. Ideally, this will be the total polemic opposite of episode one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is ideally. Gonna, ideally, this should be a lot less upsetting. I like to forget about our episode one a lot, too. <laughs> yeah, unless uh, unless one of your three things, Stan, is you watch a Serbian <laughs> film when you feel down, nope, in which case attention. I want you to leave. I attention. Attention. No. <laughs> Just so I have you gotta come back to work. And Whenever I'm feeling down, well. I like to argue with Stan about the movie High Tension. <laughs> you son of a bitch, it made no sense. <laughs> There's my number one. It's awesome. It's hilarious. <laughs> All right, Chris, why don't you start us off? What is one thing that you turn to whenever you are feeling down? Oh, uh, well, I number one's easy for me. I actually almost wore my shirt today. Um, but He is shirtless. I am shirtless. <laughs> That's the great thing about radio. I almost I'm wore a... my shirt today. <laughs> I almost wore my shirt featuring this today. As oh, I meant right. to say. oh, okay. <laughs> Damn, I was hoping you would be shirtless. <laughs> That's one of Chris's Stan's things. Speechless. He likes it when we're shirtless when he's filming down. That's not media related because we're not filming it. Uh, well, but I am taking pictures. Depends on if it's screen printing or not. Yeah. This is, we're gone. This is. It's going to be an hour of this. Oh Chris, what's God. your first thing? My first thing is one of the biggest staples of my life in terms of entertainment, and that is Mystery Science Theater 3000 and Riff Tracks. Nice. Um, both of those are always just so much fun. There's always, considering there's 10 years of that show, and it's and it's actually uh, still going, and it and the new season premieres on Thanksgiving, actually. Nice. Um, Has it only been 10 years? Well, it was 10, 10 years of the original show, and it revived a couple years back. And it was, um, that, I, okay, I thought there was yeah, more, but. There, they, it is, it's, it officially, I think it premiered uh, to 2016. Uh, the eleventh season, and then the new one starts uh, on Thanksgiving. The Netflix, yeah, for, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, their first movie is Mac and Me. I don't know. If was... <laughs> yeah, I am. Oh my God, that's gonna be special. Um, and uh, and Rift Tracks, the offshoot that um, Mike Nelson and Bill Corbett and uh, Kevin Murphy did after Mystery Science Theater. Um, there's so much good stuff, and it's just, there's always an episode, episode or some movie you can find that pick you up. Or in some cases, there are movies like Birdemic, where even with the riff tracks, Chris made me and my wife Katie watch that movie, and even with the three of them riffing on it the entire time, it was damn near unwatchable. We could have stopped. <laughs> but... We could have, but you kept saying, oh, it gets funny, it gets funny. It was funny it to me. It funny. It was hilarious to me. <laughs> That's Chris's high tension. I, I, I guess. Yes. I... Birdemic. Birdemic is to Chris as high tension is to Stan. I love it personally. I guess I just have more of a tolerance. Well, that's what you and I used to do to kill time at work yeah. when it was super slow. We would just marathon uh, episodes of Mystery Science Theater. Absolutely. I you know it's fun. I guess the lower limit for you is the room because I think 
it's probably the it actually has more it, the room is leagues ahead in terms of production value i guess oh yeah yeah i have the misfortune of saying i have watched the room by itself and the room with the rift tracks <laughs> not brie larson's that's just room. room. Yeah, no, not room. The, the Tommy Wiseau's the room. I mean, we could stick Tommy Wiseau in a room and see what happens. But. I think that's how the room got made. Somebody <laughs> left him alone in a room with a typewriter. He's yeah, actually. Hero. He's kind of my hero. Did you that, ever you finish know. The Disaster Artist? Because I think that's pretty much what happened. No, I haven't even started it yet. Oh my God, you still I have know. my book. I know. Oh my God. But yeah, no, Mystery Science Theater, I think, and what's great about it is with the different hosts that, and the amount of time that they've had in it, there's an episode that you can find for almost anyone who will just love it. I think everyone's got everyone. There's something to everyone's taste, especially because they didn't stop at just science fiction. They went to westerns. They went to uh, Hamlet. They did Hamlet. They did do Hamlet. Oh my God! It's one of my it, favorite it, Hamlet. episodes. It did. It, it pains me that they did the whole thing on Gamera films, but oh, but yeah. they but uh, I I think it's hilarious because they did. They didn't do the new ones, which are really well crafted. Um, well, no, of course not. Psychological base, but uh, but the uh, original Gamera films that they mm-hmm. picked on its you know childish qualities. You know, They're, oh my god, that reminds me. One of my I, I love show, Gamera films, by the way. Gamera is fun, and it just just reminded me one of the episodes. I showed you a a, a, a little a scene from it the other day on, on Imgur. Where uh, they they had the one of uh, Gamera doing the flip with the pole. Yes, he's doing a spin, and one, and one I remember if Joel or one of the bots just goes, "It just dawned on me how weird this film is." <laughs> well, all the we're talking about Gamera now. This is great. No, um, we're not. <laughs> but the the whole thing that Gamera just promoted really s- s- tiny, tiny, tiny twins, and almost every movie of theirs because you know that's what they did and it, and so yeah the weirdness is awesome twins bezel now chris conservatively how many copies uh, different versions of mystery science theater 3000 the movie do you own <laughs> oh oh you know that's right you know about this i own every dvd version there is um i don't went, you also have the vhs yes and the laser disc <laughs> so you just the need laser the blu-ray disc yes i oh bought the, my god there was i had a rash of um was it, did uh, you get that taken do you care still of? have a machine <laughs> Did you see a doctor? <laughs> the, the, you mean the problem of you letting me finish my sentences? <laughs> no, no, the problem of your rash. I was going to say I had a, a little a bit of rash of collecting a few years back where it was just on eBay. I was like, I just want every version of the movie. Because <laughs> the movie was, was my gateway. It was, um, I was, I was ill as a kid. And, when, and this was like the year, the summer after it came, or not summer, but the year after it came out. And I had seen it previously. My mom rented it for me again. And I just... The movie I am in love with the most, and I can quote almost all out of those riffs by heart. I can like mouth like some people mouth along with some movies. I can mouth along with that one easily, and um, that's where I fell in love with it. Honestly, nice. Yeah, so I went back and I just had a spate of collecting. It's like I have the the Blu-ray DVD um, version that Shout Factory put out, and then I had the the print they put out a few years prior to that, and then I was like, you know, I want the original. And I got it, and I got it off eBay, and I was like, well, I, want the v- I used to have the VHS, I want the VHS, and I was like, oh, they made a Laserdisc. I want to buy it. <laughs> Do you have a player? A I don't have player? a Laserdisc player. It's purely Nobody just- has a Laserdisc player I, That's what I was asking. It's like, oh, is man. that a thing? Oh, that just reminds me, is like, apparently Kevin Smith really hated the idea of DVDs when they first came out, mm-hmm. and it was all so about Laserdisc. Laserdisc was the future, yeah. <laughs> you have to take it out and flip it halfway yeah. through. Well, that's why we have Blu-ray discs now, is because it's the advanced version of laser discs that you well, don't one have could to turn argue over. that DVDs were the advanced version of laser but, discs. But no, the, Blu-rays were the, the thing, advanced the, version. The reason why laser discs was DVDs. so huge was to collect the data, you know. And so it's like you had that's where you they're collecting our data. That you had the, the Mark amount Zuckerberg. Of data, so, so you could have the you know commentary and the big yeah. long you know hour and a half long yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, special features and stuff where uh, regular DVDs. Don't don't have enough data storage capability to collect, you this know. Is, so it's very 
in often that you have the big collector's editions of DVDs. Sorry, this is a slight tangent. That actually was really funny to me about early DVDs where they didn't have the concept of menus to yeah. navigate. <laughs> right. You popped it in. Well, that's why so many early um, DVDs still had an advertisement on the back that's like, <laughs> director's commentary, <laughs> deleted scenes, menu. <laughs> menu! <laughs> What's hilarious, what's hilarious about the Mystery Science Theater one is it has a menu, but it auto-starts. You have to, through like a little bit of sorcery with the menu button, like pause it and send it back and do something so that it will actually go to the <laughs> hidden menu in it. <laughs> they didn't think... It was riffing itself? They didn't... No, it, it's not intentional. <laughs> they didn't think, oh, they want to go to the menu first and make a decision. It's like... They want to watch the movie immediately, and maybe if they need to stop, I don't know, maybe we'll toss a menu in there so they can use it, but don't not advertise it. <laughs> Stan, what about you? What's one of your go-tos? I had to edit myself for a second. Um, uh, I, I Actually, uh, one that came up clearly on the way over here, um, and, I, and I wasn't even going to include this, but, uh, uh, but the idea of radio. You know, discovering new bands, discovering new music, uh, dis- discovering talk radio when it was talk radio about music, and uh, which you don't have anymore on regular AM FM. But I'm lucky enough to be a Sirius XM subscriber. Blah blah blah. And we are not sponsored by Sirius XM. And uh, I. I just discovered a new, and you would love this. It's called Volume. Um, it's talk radio about music. And on the way over here, I was listening to this um, uh, discussion. Uh, the The two hosts, um, I think it's called Replay is the show, but I'm not sure if that's the correct title. But um, they were talking to this Wall Street Journal uh, writer who just finished a book on Barry White and his music of love, and uh, and it's basically a history of Barry White and how he started off as you know uh, a producer and a and a talent agent. He would discover groups, and most of the folks, of course, that he discovered were um, female artists that sounded like Diana Ross or the Supremes as a whole, you know. And it's like. Um, So his first group, Love Unlimited, was basically these three females, female singers that he put together, and um, and but just discovering this, you know, and hearing about hearing a whole show centered around Barry White was just phenomenal, and uh, uh, so my thing is. I don't really go back to radio, you know, turn on the radio and stuff. I leave, I have the radio on at home all the time, but uh, the idea, I'll go to YouTube or something and uh, um, not watch, you know, gaming videos or whatever, but watch old bands that I was into a long time ago and get refreshed or find a music interview show uh, like I just discovered Jonesy's Jukebox, which is Steve Jones of formerly of the Sex Pistols, and he interviews people for an hour, you know, just one person, whether it's Ozzy Osbourne or the one that I caught with Rick Springfield, motherfuckers. <laughs> um, and it was like one of the greatest discussions. It's basically this is what we're doing is is basically what Jonesy's jukebox is. And it's just people talking about what they love about each other's music, you know, or music as a genre. And, and it's like what turned you on to the sounds or what influenced you so it's just music uh radio style you know or like going to spotify or something like that or uh pandora and creating your own music list you know and and uh playlist i mean and it's like just that kind of idea that there's still music to be discovered there's still sounds to be discovered and uh, that is probably the biggest and 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 it's weird because I've been spending so much time on Red Dead Redemption Two, which we'll talk about later. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but I am forever yeah. grateful to you for introducing me to the Outlaw Country Station on Sirius XM because I love to put it on at work and annoy the hell out of our coworkers. <laughs> since you and I are the only ones who appreciate that station, 
oh my god i mean and I knew there was another motive behind and it. we're and we're i'm well, going I know, on the I cruise mean, again yeah for the second time you know it's like the outlaw country cruise is what he's referring to and, and just the amount of great sound and and these are not necessarily old folks like cash and haggard oh i'm i'm wearing my cash t-shirt today by the way you don't have to show us um i'm showing the viewers at home Mm -hmm. um viewers uh, or listeners at home stan (laughs) is wearing what appears to be four layers a hoodie on a sweatshirt on a button down on a shirt and he came in with a jacket on it's cold just for and your... i have thermal underwear we haven't gotten into the fact that stan's a lizard person yet have we oh. no that's coming later okay his third thing is the rock that he uh <laughs> sunbathes on. that he sunbathes on yes. in his terrarium um but yeah this the sound of uh new folks that i wouldn't have ever deigned to listen to coming uh, and hearing them on outlaw country you know and it's just like that that to me the discovery of a new band a new group a new performer that is a really uplifting thing for me that is always fun isn't it because I, I i again i'm not a big radio person either so i will find out about things piecemeal or i'll catch a song and i'll be like i want to know what that is and then i'll fall down a, a hole somewhere just like looking up new stuff mm-hmm. or stuff that i like by them and i have a tendency to just dismiss new country artists um out of hand just because I, the majority of the new country that I hear is just flat out terrible. But um, the Outlaw Country Station on Sirius XM, they will occasionally play something that is new that I'm like, oh shit, this is Cody terrible. Jinx. Who? Cody Jenks. Um, must be the whiskey. Oh yes, yeah. And because um, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't have even listened to him if it wasn't for that station. Wheeler Walker Jr. Wheeler Walker Jr. Kind of related. Who has to a new record coming out, by the way? <laughs> Kind of related. Something I'll do with music sometimes is I'll just go on YouTube and I'll be like, "What's a song I like?" Type in remix and then just sift through and like listen to like twenty or thirty different remixes and find new ones that I like. Mm-hmm. Love it. it. Yeah, it it uh, it hands. If, if if I could do radio, and this is why I, one of, another reason why I love this format so much of our of our team is that uh, it's just. It's like we're doing radio, and I, and I think it's I think it's great. Uh, I think it's real great. I could do that forever. It's wonderful. All right. Well, one of my go tos is video games that I have already played and usually already beaten at least oh, yeah, once. Oh yeah, you mentioned this. Um, I have an Xbox One, and I have more games on the hard drives that I that came out in sometime in the uh, 2000 to 2010 era than anything recent. I hardly ever buy new games. I, uh, unless it's a sequel to something that I already know that I love, but uh, currently on the hard drive, I've got all of the Batman Arkham games, the entire Halo collection, um, all of the dead, uh, yeah, dead space games, the original red dead redemption just this past week, actually over, um, over Halloween, I downloaded the original Dead Rising because it was six bucks on Xbox Live. And I cannot tell you how many hours I killed in college, it completely ignoring the plot of the video game. Um, it has one. I'm aware of it. I've never once finished it because I will. It's like GTA. I'll get going and I'll just jump in a car and start running people over instead of paying attention to the plot and seeing how many cops I can take out before the, I get wasted. With Dead Rising, I will boot it up and be like, all right, I'm actually going to play the plot of this game now. I, I still have no idea what happens after like the midway point of the game. Because that becomes basically the plot. Is get through the get through the store or the mall or whatever that mm-hmm. it's in. And... Yeah, I will literally just see what weapons I can find and just go around watching my zombie kill count go up until I'm like, shit, it's been four it hours and I haven't you, accomplished anything. It doesn't matter where you go. There's waves and waves and waves of zombies that you have to get through to get anywhere. So it's like, that's what the plot becomes. Yeah. Well, there's that. And I know you mentioned before one of the one of the real fun fun for playing those is like the new game plus is mm-hmm. where, you get to, where you get to keep your... Um, Oh yeah, and with Dead Rising, you get to start over at any point that you want, but keep like you don't have to beat the game to start a new game plus. You can just save and then start over the plot at the level that you finished at. So it's really great to go and just mow down a bunch of zombies and jump up a bunch of levels and then start over again. 
Absolutely. I, I, and to that point, I recently beat the the Spider Man game that came out, and I'm and they right before I finished, they added new game plus to the game, and I was like, oh hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> And just over the summer, I downloaded and replayed both of the original Marvel Ultimate Alliance oh, games. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, the first one, I have beat countless times. Um, I'm always finding myself going back and restarting one of the earlier Halos and uh, playing through that for a while. I don't know what it is and why I have... Well, I guess because they're expensive and I'm poor, that I don't play a whole lot of new games. Uh, but, yeah... It's kind of like comfort food. I know I'm going to enjoy it, and I know it's going to cheer me up because I've already played it already. Absolutely. So that's one of mine. Games I've already played. I've, that feeds straight into my number two, by the way. Because <laughs> go for it. Uh, well, no, it's it's perfect because I like I tried to I tried to. Let's hear this shit. When you said multimedia, I was like I tried to pick something from different aspects so I wouldn't focus too much on one thing. So my my second one was video games and. One one of my favorite genres genres is um, beat 'em ups. You know the the classic arcade walk through, beat the crap out of everything on the screen type of games. Like that that obsession actually started because I was young enough, or uh, yeah, I, I, far back enough. There were still arcades around when I was younger, uh, and one of my favorite arcade games was Final Fight, and the Simpsons arcade game. Both are the same kind of deal. I loved them. I knew they were, I like I knew they were quarter they were quarter slash token munchers, but it was just I wanted it was just fun. It was just something fun and stress relieving about walking through as a character and just clearing out a screen of people by beating the crap out of them. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is uh, another fun stress reliever that came along way later um, was uh, the Lego video games. It started with the the Star Wars games and expanded outward from there. Uh, and they're always just fun because they're just they're simple puzzle games for the most part. But you get to traverse through levels based on you know movies and stuff you liked, and it's just a collectathon. But it's really chill and there's no pressure. It's just fun. It's meant to be and it's humorous too. I always forget how difficult the puzzles in those games oh, they can, can be. be. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'll always remember um, shortly after I graduated from college playing one of the original Star Wars Lego games with a friend of mine while his roommate was nearby. And we got stuck somewhere. I can't remember where. We could not figure out where, what we were supposed to do, how to solve this puzzle to keep going. And it turned into the two of us arguing with each other over <laughs> what to do while my friend's roommate sat behind us going, it's a game for children, guys. It's a game for children. Something you did when we later played one together. You would just, when we were getting stuck, you would start repeating that mantra. It's yes. E10 plus. <laughs> E10 plus. Game for children, guys. <laughs> and that, you know, and it's also fun because it, it fuels my, in a, in a not, in a, like in a not bad way, like say like, like mobile games would, it fuels my obsess my collection obsessiveness. Because mm-hmm. when I get into games like that, it's like you have to collect all the, the, the little Lego studs. You're supposed to collect all the mini kits to create, you know, create things from the the uh, movies or whatever it's based on, and you're supposed to collect all this stuff and get it all, and it's just that's fun for me too, especially because it's dressed up in Legos and it's just it's not it doesn't feel like an oppressive slog. It feels like you're doing something fun. Very nice, Stan. What about you? What else you got? Uh, well, my <clears throat> next is ditto to Chris's, except um. My I came to gaming regularly really late in life. Um, uh, I finally got around to getting a pl- PlayStation Two in two thousand what seven or something like that state, and uh, and I was starting you know with the Maddens and the, I mean I had a Sega Genesis back in the day, but uh, um, I wasn't committed to mm-hmm. anything until really recently. I was going to say that's like years. that's kind of late in the PlayStation 2's life cycle, but no, actually the play, PS2 lasted a long time. Yeah. yeah. And uh uh I was starting with the Madden's the and it was EA MLB, I mean uh EA um the EA ba- baseball game uh MVP um <clears throat> and then I went to PS3 and now I'm PS4. Uh, but what committed me is not necessarily, I was doing the Call of Duty stuff for a while, but what really hooked me was the role-playing games, mm-hmm. the role-playing uh, fantasy um, open world stuff. Um, 
the Elder Scrolls series, especially Skyrim, uh, and I alluded to it earlier, the Red Dead Redemption stuff, and now uh, just released Red Dead Redemption 2, um, hands down the game of the year. Um, I'd argue that, but uh, okay. <laughs> but um, I want to hear uh, you two go head to head about this uh, uh, on somebody else's podcast. <laughs> I mean, and and the thing is, is like uh, the idea of it being a ro- R- RPG open world, it makes it very cinematic and it puts you into that cinematic state. And also, I to uh, Hensley's chagrin, I downloaded Star Trek Online and. <laughs> That's another thing that is... Why do you say that's to my chagrin? Because <laughs> he won't stop ta- telling us about his adventures in space. Ex- well, yes, exactly. yeah, it's that part that chagrins me. I don't know if that's a word, but it's not, uh, it it's not the fact it, that you it downloaded is. it. But uh, uh, It's a word, maybe not a verb. But. It's, it's when you would come into work every day. I'm an admiral now. I'm a rear admiral now. I have my own spaceship now. He keep, I'm a rear admiral. He does admiral. keep demanding that you add his titles to his, to his name tag. Exactly. Man. That's not happening. I have a very large name tag now. Well, that uh, yes a name tag is what we'll call it um uh but uh and that to me was one of the greatest discoveries i've had in the last couple of years is uh discovering star trek online and they're actually going into the um discovery universe um oh good january. did you so, hear dave <laughs> you'll hear about that come january um better brush uh, up because he's going to be talking to you all about uh, it i have never been able to get into mmos I tried way back when I was in college. My well, you remember my old roommate was obsessed with World of Warcraft. I gave that a try and couldn't do it. Much later, these are, strangely enough, these are all uh, roommate related. Um, after I moved back from LA, I was staying with a guy who played um, City of Heroes, and uh, so I gave that a shot. Could not get into it. I don't know what it is. It's weird because what's great about STO Star Trek Online um, <laughs> is that we're getting all the inside knowledge. <laughs> I know we're talking to an expert. Is that um, I'm going to hashtag I, STO. I, belo- in the show I, notes. I belong to a fleet, which I guess is you know you know the real people playing uh, are you know it's they, like an alliance. Yeah, you can you can gather up and but the thing is, I, I don't have a headset, you know, or anything, so I don't really talk to people uh even though it's an mmo and they're probably like, screaming at you they probably are <laughs> but the thing is is that i'm i'm recruiting all these people because i am an admiral and to join my fleet and stuff and actually i'm part of a fleet so i'm actually asking them to join the fleet that i'm cling on lover 69 uh, what the n- fuck are you doing <laughs> 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 but um uh, and that's the kind of community where and you I'm would playing, only get a response i'm playing as a romulan you know uh, believe that or not um uh which is i'm sorry really awesome. romulan lover 69 right and uh uh vicath actually is my name um uh. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i didn't mean to laugh but dave looked at me the dichotomy between your star trek online character discussion versus way back in when our serbian film discussion is so jarring <laughs> The same man who was espousing the value of a Serbian film is now telling I, us about... Is, I welcome this change. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying um, there's anything wrong with it. I'm saying it's borderline shocking. It, it, uh, I, I, I was totally shocked when I you know, was loving it so much. And it's like, you're literally in space. That's why I'm talking about the cinematic. You're literally in space? You're literally in space. Well, no, that's, um, that's the great thing about stuff like that. Cause like for, the cinema, the cinematic quality. When, it, when you know? find your niche and like, and it's like, that's the kind of stuff that was built for things like Star Trek and stuff like that, where it's like, it's an ongoing mission. It's o and it's pretty much open and it's just, it's perfect. It's kind of perfect for that kind of, that kind of area of fandom. Because Hensley and I both love the Mass Effect games, and mm-hmm. we're probably two of the maybe nine people that really like Andromeda, even. Mm-hmm. And I, I love Andromeda. I found um, out thanks to Twitter, we are not alone. There are <laughs> there are more well, people out there who. I enjoyed think that's it. because it it was it, it it had a lot of issues in the, when it launched, but over oh, yeah. time they fixed it. They oh, yeah. they they fixed a and, lot of patches later. Yeah, the yeah. updates were always going on, and and yeah. Um, I consider Andromeda one of the great games of the last uh, five years or so. So, but uh, but the sense that uh, we both love Mass Effect games, mm-hmm. uh, Star Trek Online just takes that to the you know far you know a farther 
platform for it where everything is continuing like chris said it's like you discover you have all these missions and the game has been around or the mmo has been around for 10 years now oh wow 15 15 years um so they you you have all the stuff from the past and the movies and the series of the past bringing in the new stuff that's coming in you know with the calvin timeline and the discovery uh show and everything so it's like um the idea of the continuing growth of it um which just like mass effect because you're with these characters and mass effect so long that you be you have relationships with them and then the the growth of star trek online the same same thing it's like you're with this crew that you've recruited and it's like you go on these missions and blah blah that sounds really 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 pathetic on my part no, but no, but no. but in Actually, the sense no, of stuff that makes I you mean, feel good i mean probably some of our listeners the stuff that makes you feel good not to the good, two of us um and that i spend an inordinate amount of time and there's going to be certain people that you know oh that's why um i can't talk to you ever um <laughs> but uh no, no I, that's not the reason I think that when I talk to you. But like Red Dead and Star Trek Online, um, uh, they take a lot. They, I, I let myself become part of those worlds um, uh, simply because you do become part of those worlds. That's what gaming's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, one of my all-time favorite MMO stories, this isn't Star Trek uh, Online related. It's World of Warcraft. Like I said, my old roommate used to be obsessed with it. And we were having a party at my old apartment one night, and everyone's in the living room hanging out and drinking, and we're playing music and being loud. All of a sudden, my roommate appears in the door of his bedroom, and we're like, oh, holy shit, you're going to come and hang out with us and talk to us. It's great. And he's there uh, for about five minutes, and he's like, yeah, I'm waiting for my turtle to get here. And we're like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm waiting on a turtle to arrive to take me to another island in WoW. And we're like, okay. So he's talking to us, and then in mid-sentence, he turns around and looks at his computer and goes, oh, sorry, guys, I got to go. My turtle's here. Is it Gamera? No, I have no <laughs> idea. But he, he said, I got to go. My turtle's here, and then turned around and walked back. I think I was at that party. Disappeared for the rest of the night. I think I was there for that one. So <laughs> hold on, guys. My turtle's here is my, my new favorite excuse to get out of something. Turtle's here. Yeah. That is wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, another one of my go-to. Do we have tissues? Uh, uh, no, same, I don't think same. we do. We have to go get a tissue. Okay. We're gonna. Stan's gonna take a t- quick break to go and get a tissue. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide if I want to edit this part out or just I, awkwardly I, I, leave it I in. Kinda, uh, Bye, right. Stan. Let's talk shit about him. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, my next uh, go-to pick-me-up is music videos. Um, and usually I will go down a rabbit hole. I will start with something I've seen before, probably seen a million times, and then just see where that takes me. And um, strangely enough, one of my favorite go-tos to start with on that rabbit hole journey is... Any one of Lady Gaga's music videos. She did a bunch of oddly compelling, like cinematic quality no. music videos yeah, that I, I, I just love. That. I can see that because I mean, a big part of her thing is very visual and uh, visually mm-hmm. arresting. And yeah, storytelling. Yeah, more so than the actual song is. the The video uh, tells a complete story, which is just fascinating to me. I've always been in love with music videos. I like I like that. I like the I like that she would. I, it feels to me like she would make the music first and then listen to it again and be like, "Let me make a story out of this." Mm-hmm. I like that after the fact. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm also a big fan of uh, metrics music videos. Should have written this down because now that I'm on the spot, I'm like, uh, I, I watch a million music videos and now I can't think of a single one to bring up as an example. I haven't I haven't listened to a lot of them. What what are, what are, what are theirs like? Metric. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Stan just wanders by like. Uh, He's back from Kleenex Quest. Uh, <laughs> got my own tissues. He got his own tissues finally. My my train of thought has been completely derailed. 
You were fine up until we both saw him like, walk like, past the door. Until you walked by the door like Bigfoot going into the I underbrush. I thought you were leaving to go You were even him. swinging I, your arms. I, I, like, did, I, did, I didn't know that somebody had locked the door, so I was just making sure that we were locked. If, anyone, if there are any squatchers out there in Rock Hill looking for <laughs> Sasquatch. Yeah. We found that him. That is the He's, worst possible name. You've never heard that? that no. Is, is that real? Yeah, no, they go squatching. That's terrible. That for Sasquatch. That sounds, that sounds like a filthy, filthy sex act. <laughs> it could also be that, for all I know. Anyway, that's it. That's all I had. My train of thought has been completely derailed. No, um, Music I, videos. I love them. It's Chris. an old one. Oh, if you're looking shit, for something yeah. visually to watch, I would suggest uh, Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer. It's like, that's a classic. It just it incorporates live action, animation, stop motion. Now, uh, fill me in on this because, again, I, I brought it up at the beginning of the episode. Um, the podcast Storm of Spoilers that I stole this yeah. idea from. Listening to their most recent episode, one of the hosts brings up uh, something that he thought everyone already knew, which clearly they didn't. Is Sledgehammer really about Peter Gabriel's penis? I don't know. I don't think it is. <laughs> as soon as he he made that proclamation, I was like, I have to ask Chris. I know he loves I, this song. Is it really about his penis? I mean, there is a part in the song where he's like, he's ta- he's saying like, uh, we should ask Phil Collins. <laughs> Am I on? Yes. Yes, you're on. <laughs> um, I could hear myself. I mean, I, I mean, there's there's cold? that like the second verse of the song is "Show me around your fruit fruit cakes and I'll be your honeybee." <laughs> I mean, there's that line where he specifically says, I, "I'm down to fuck." I mean, <laughs> but I don't think the whole Peter Gabriel down to fuck. But I mean, it it DTF. could it it could be about how he's you know he's ready and willing to be someone's love someone's lover yeah like why don't you call my name i want to be your sledgehammer it's like I, that could be but i mean in a general- so it's not related to fred dillard in any way what film me hammer? in please no no <laughs> what no what i have no idea what just happened <laughs> or- no what <laughs> media that makes you feel good uh, hammer remember no isn't what? his that his name Fred Dillard? I don't I don't know what he's we're a talking. Fred got, Wire or something. I don't Former know. football player. You've seen Hammer, haven't you? Have oh, you, not? you are not talking to sports people, Stan. <laughs> no, yeah, but you've you seen think? Hammer, haven't you? Mm-mm. Okay, if you just keep okay. saying you've seen Hammer, <laughs> haven't you? That's not going to make either of us have seen this film. All right, uh, we, you can edit this part out because obviously I'm the only Hammer fan, uh, not, and we're not talking MC. We're talking this like show. Hammer films. No, no, the uh, series Hammer. Mm-mm. Right? No. I'm Detective sorry. show. Mike Hammer? No, not Mike Hammer. No. I <laughs> with the Stan, neither of us uh, have any idea what you're talking about. Well, you no, have smartphones. Well there 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 was the series Sledge Hammer, but I don't think that's what you're talking about is either, is it? I don't think so. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Because that, that was a parody. He had a really of, long gun. I think that was that was the parody. That, it was the parody kind of cop procedural called Sledge Hammer. It's just Sledgehammer? Yes. Okay. I don't think that was related. Okay. Wow. I know. Listeners, if you have any idea what the hell Stan is talking about, feel I free know, to fill us in. Shoot I me an email. I know of it. I've never seen it. Give it us a was, call. It was eight, eight, eight. A, um, a, a, a TV show. It was a comedy. It was basically like a light parody of, of action cop shows called Sledgehammer. It was like two, two words instead of one. No, that's, that's not it. Not it? No. Oh, then I have no idea what he's talking and about. And also, wasn't... That show that you're talking about called Mike Hammer? No. 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 It was called Sledgehammer. <laughs> wow, we have gone. <laughs> I'm, Fuck, a, I'm looking it up. Smart I, phones. Al- we made it almost 40 minutes before we went completely off I, the rails. I thought we did that already. We, we, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so, we thought oh, we, no, no, we talked about Jurassic Park before. Well, we thought we got it out of our system ahead of time, but right. we were wrong. No, we did not. Chris, yes. what's your uh, your last go to well, pick me up that you my want last to talk one, about? My last one's kind of again, you kind of led into mine a little bit. Um, because uh, my third one, I was trying to think, I was narrowing it down. A lot of the things I was coming up with were um, centered around the same thing. So my third one is actually, at least nowadays, it's YouTube. Like in general, there's a lot of different. YouTube really opened up a, a platform for people to put out entertainment. And um, I've found a lot that I like on there from uh, 
specifically, uh, there's a group called Red Letter Media who do a lot of good stuff. They do a series called Best of the Worst where they highlight terrible movies and they kind of they round table discussion them and it's it's hilarious and I love that and I'll I'll use stuff like that when I'm having trouble falling asleep. I'll just pop that on and I'll listen to it and it'll let me go. Um, I Stan kind of mentioned it earlier. Um, I, I there are a couple of different channels that do let's play uh, of video games and I like them because mostly because they highlight interesting games, games that I probably wouldn't even play myself, which I always thought was kind of the purpose of let's play for me. It's like I'm never going to touch this game. But I'm kind of interested to see how it plays out, and they they have a lot they have a lot of fun with it, and they have a lot of personality, and I enjoy those, and I just enjoy those a lot. Um, I th- I think that kind of covers it because I like I uh, just for budgetary reasons I got rid of cable like mm-hmm. a few years ago. It's just, I couldn't you know, like the price for what I was getting was just not working for me in terms of budget. So I just so YouTube really became a focal point. Uh, for a lot of my entertainment now, it's like stuff like uh, Super Best Friends Play, Red Letter Media, um, uh, Game Grumps, stuff like that. I I tune into the, I get that almost daily, and it's interesting content. And it's it, and it's kind of like the the ultimate. And I know YouTube has their TV thing, but honestly, it's like I get media that is ta- that is tailored to my interests, and I get to pick and choose what I want to pay attention to and it's like that's the ultimate in terms of visual entertainment now nice stan what's your third pick me up um this is where i say and i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna isolate on netflix for this but this is where i say thank god thank whatever supreme being there is for uh something like netflix Mm -hmm. Um, streaming in general uh, spe- specifically streaming in general now. Uh, since, Stan's you know, wearing his "What Would Netflix Do" bracelet right now. Yes, uh, Amazon Prime. I, you know, I went and got that. Um, uh, but Netflix, that was the first, you know, movie um, mail order movie subscription that I ever oh, yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because uh, really, my go-to ultimate go-to is watching movies Mm -hmm. um i'm doing this because i saw taxi driver way back in the day on vcr on a vhs you know and um and because of that it's like i need to see movies and not just you know popcorn films or whatever uh which i am a fan of the schlock whatever the uh, big commercial, and we'll talk about this later, probably for uh, one of the later episodes. But I'm really into r- really weird shit, and uh, um, you don't say. <laughs> but you've um, got no room to talk. No, but, I uh, absolutely don't. Uh, but because of Netflix and Amazon Prime, uh, I am able to see stuff that we wouldn't have been able to see, you know, and, and now, you know, they do television series and everything, you know, and it's like, they do series work. And, and so you, you get to see Westworld or, uh, well, Westworld is HBO. Yeah. But, but through Amazon prime, yeah, I have an HBO, uh, subscription, you know, for their stuff, uh, streaming stuff. And, uh, but, um, house of cards, uh, uh, which I, don't watch as much now, but when it first came out, I was hooked. Um, but mainly uh, the series stuff, not so much. But I don't know. Am I still the only one here that's seen Mandy? Yes, you. Oh, and I've heard about it. I I have not watched it. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I do plan to. Without a streaming service, I don't see Mandy, which was my favorite movie experience of the year so far. You know, and. Uh, that's the Nicolas Cage freak out film that is brilliant and some of the greatest effects ever f- and fight choreography ever put on. Uh, just a great movie uh, done by the son of uh, George Cosmatos, who did Tombstone. Um, I, this is his son. I am looking forward to seeing Mandy. I've heard enough good things about it and read some good reviews, but mostly emphasizing it. it's too good for how insane it is. However, I am fully 
prepared to high tension this with you <laughs> after I finally see it. Um, uh, this is Nick Cage's uh, John Wick, you know, hands down. And I wanted John Wick um, uh, Red team up soon. Uh, if anybody out there is is reading right Stan's now, fan fiction, um, it, it is it it is definitely John Wick's. I mean, uh, can, um, Nicholas Cage's flannel John wearing Wick. John Wick. Yes. Um, Lumberjack. Um, but, uh, so that lumber, John Wick, lumber, John Wick, um, watching movies. If I have, if I have an escape me- mechanism, if I have a defense mechanism, if I have anything, uh, that helps me get through the shit, um, it's watch it's watching movies and um um you know at and the, at this I, I was talking about the cinematic quality of uh of open world stuff video gaming that's simply what it is is that the idea that one becomes part of the world that you're watching and unfortunately it's only for and and, and people complain about length lengths of films you know it's like uh, you know I'll watch all three of the extended versions of Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and not have a problem being in that world for 10 hours and be depressed when it's over. You know? Oh, I've read a l- uh, I haven't read them, but I've seen a lot of headlines recently that are like, are movies getting too long? Uh, movie run times, you know, uh, exceeding two and a half hours on the regular. Uh, who cares? Well, remember back in the start of movies when people didn't know how long to make them, so they made ten-hour epics. Yeah, and the thing is, is like if it's if it's a good world, if it's a good film, you don't want it necessarily to end. Yeah, you know, you want to be because once it's done, you got to go back to the shit. You know, and it's like, um, it's like I no, I want to be there. I mean, if it's if it's a bad, you know three hours like Ishtar or something, then, you know, you might want to get yeah, out of it. fuck Ishtar. <laughs> Fishtar. Um, but, and, and, or Hudson Hawk or some, sh- you know, <laughs> two and a half hour uh, thing like that. But, but then, but then on the other hand, I'll, 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 you go back and watch those now, they're not as horrendous as, you know, you know. They're not great, but they're not. You, you see them, you see them for the humor that they, you know, have, you know, that they are, inherently putting out there you, you know, can so appreciate like, it for its failings as much and as you can see it for free and you exactly. can see it for free. So, but um uh but yeah going into the worlds of john wick or going into the worlds of uh of mandy or going into the worlds of the lord of the rings and in my case uh that's why i don't have a problem with the hobbit um peter jackson's a hobbit um, I can just because it just continues the world of Lord of the Rings and it's like I'm good with that I can be in that forever um, but uh, and we, we didn't talk about that for our remake show of what should have been done right um, uh, but uh, what the Hobbit the Hobbit yeah um, good. thank you <laughs> I don't. Uh, I've only seen but, the first uh, part. I haven't seen uh, the second or third. I have. I wouldn't movies, have. I wouldn't have anything to contribute to that discussion right. other than <laughs> I gave up on the Hobbit trilogy after the first one. Um, but move just and discovering a new Scorsese film, discovering a new uh, uh, Tarantino film. Uh, I I I I praise whoever for Tarantino because he made movie making fun again you know um and uh at a point where scorsese was trying to get really really straightforward and because of tarantino's uh scorsese went back doing his more esoteric stuff you know and you know wolf of wall street and stuff like that you know um discovering you know my influence is spielberg who has gone you know who started as an influence and has now become another influence has become a, has regained his status as an influence on me because he just keeps doing great stuff and just going, just watching movies in general is like, it's going to make me, even if it's, even if it's not necessarily a happy film or, you know, a, a, a uplifting film, 
This is where we're going to high tension or... Oh my God, uh, no. So d- just the experience of being part of the experience of watching the movie. Um, and and I've rediscovered going to see movies by going to see movies with Hensley and stuff is just, you know, two guys just like, oh my God, it's a movie and this is a great thing. And it's like, and this mainly the, you know, the Marvel films, you know... Um, Seeing Captain America and Iron Man fight together is just a you know joyous experience. You know, it's like um, rediscovering cinema in a cinema um, in the last few years because of Marvel films. And and this and then these aren't like you know high high art movies or whatever, but just the idea of experiencing movies and being part of the world that the movie is set in. That's, it's just... I like that crazy. rather than narrowing down your argument, you went from specifically streaming on Netflix to the entire <laughs> Marvel <laughs> Cinematic Universe. You went from specific to vague. I think it was less about streaming itself and then reconnecting with the joy of of a good movie. Yeah. Or finding um, a movie that clicks with you. Because All right, you're Netflix, writing his theses from now on. I, 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 Netflix, that's, what, that's what I could feel when he was Netflix, talking. And because Netflix is doing movies now am i still on uh (laughs) since netflix is actually producing movies they are actually even though because of volume the the just sheer amount of movies they're putting out there's definitely you know a good portion that's not very good films but then there's the ones that say this is why we make movies they're willing to try this Mm -hmm. is why we continue to watch this stuff this is why we continue to do this work is like why I, you know, one day was saying I'm I'm a, I'm done with this, this this field. I'm I'm over it. I will never direct or be in another show or be in another whatever. And then you know I see something. And I'm like two weeks later. I'm like okay, we well, can do something else. You know. And to think, at one point they practically begged Blockbuster to buy them. Yeah. All right. Well, my oh, before you jump into your third thing, I did look it up. Uh, Sledgehammer is. Gabriel said regarding the theme of his song, sometimes sex can break through barriers when other forms of communication are not working too well. So it's not specifically about his dick, but it is about sex. <laughs> All but right, well, you, thank you, you for clearing you that up. Did you look up the show? No. The Fred Drawer show? No. No? No. Dude, you would love it. It's a it. mystery that will last forever. And we're going to leave it that way. All Number right. three. Well, we're going to wrap this up with well, my third yeah. go-to. Um which is specifically one cartoon, and uh, that is American Dad. Oh, God, Seth yeah. Seth MacFarlane's <laughs> yes. American Dad. Because way back when I had cable and a DVR, I just randomly, I was like, I really enjoy this show. I'm going to record it. It was the joy of having a new thing. Like, oh, I've got a DVR now. What am I going to do with it? TBS and TNT played American Dad so much that I'd get home from work and have like eight episodes recorded a day. (laughs) And I just started, you know, watching mostly it was a lot of the same episodes over and over again. And then they put the entire series up on Netflix, talking about our streaming services. And so I marathoned it once again. I think this time I started at like season two because season one of American Dad really isn't that great. Uh, marathon the entirety of, uh, or the majority of American Dad went to do it again. Just like, I enjoy this. It's good to put on, just to have on. It cheers me up. Eventually, Netflix lost it. And that actually bummed me out when I looked and saw that American Dad was no longer available on Netflix. And then I finally got on the Hulu train. I have no idea what the hell took me so long because I signed up so that Katie and I could watch Castle Rock. And I started looking around and I discovered, oh my God, everything that Netflix lost, Hulu gained. That, they that got, makes sense. They would snap it up. Yeah, they've got all six seasons of Lost. Oh my God. And they've got all five of the pre-Yahoo seasons of Community. And they have all 11 or 12 seasons of American Dad. (laughs) So once again, for the third or fourth time, I am working my way through that cartoon. I'm up to season 10 now. It's such a fun show. It really is. The personalities and and everything, they just click, and the writing is fantastic. And you and I quote that show entirely too often. (laughs) 
<laughs> and the lead character's name is Stan. And yes, the lead character's name is Stan. Oh, and there's so many. Roger, great there's moments. something you ought to know about me by now. I don't, I don't learn, learn lessons. lessons. <laughs> That's funny. I'm funny. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that is my uh, my pick me yeah. up go to is the show American Dad. That one and then Bob's Burgers for me. I know you have to be more in a specific mood to enjoy that one, but that, yeah, I don't know why that is. But uh, there's just yeah. something. It's something very. Uh, it's weird how it gets fantastical, but very r- real and relatable at the same time. Them and and then on the opposite scale is Futurama for me. Mm-hmm. It's like just way out space adventures. <laughs> well, almost adventures. almost edging out American Dad. Um, would have been uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, another show that I uh, marathoned all the way through on Netflix and then got sad when they took it down. And again, <laughs> I discovered every season is on Hulu. So I am also watching that again. Uh, before we close out, I like I said, I'm bad at making lists. I ended up with a couple of honorable mentions, if you don't mind me Go throwing for it. them out there. Well, one of them I was like, The Onion. Uh, the Onion is a feel good, and not in a traditional sense, but they have a way of making me laugh at the horrible things that are happening in the world with their writing. They're very, they're very spot on. And the on. fact that The Onion is gradually starting to become nonfiction. <laughs> it's just right. they're, but they, they all. I mean, they they have with the, the political stuff, yeah. But then they also toss out like. Just random, like they'll they'll make very specific articles about local th- like local personal things, and it's just <laughs> I look at it and just I giggle, and it's like that makes me that genuinely makes me feel better. Local man, so fucking done with this shit. <laughs> Stuff like that. Nice. Uh, there was one. I there was one because I I mainly see it on the, from their Facebook pages. There's one is like a local man, local person's attempt to be more optimistic or positive lasted all of like two fucking days <laughs> um that sounds right like there there's a ton of pod other podcasts i listen to i know it's it's weird but there are other podcasts i listen to i it's not like you're cheating on us with other podcasts <laughs> what, what else do you listen to oh my god uh how the, a lot of these help me get through work because when i'm at work and I'm, I'm working in the back i can listen to this and just kill time it's like uh, how did this get made? Mm-hmm. So like a they they if you don't know that they watch uh, bad movies and then they they talk about them. They open they uh, they have a round table on movies they watch. Usually they're terrible. Um, what else? Uh, no such thing as a fish. This is the the re, there's a British like uh, kind of like trivia panel show called QI. Mm-hmm. It seems quite interesting. The researchers um, for that. Uh, do a regular podcast called No Such Thing as a Fish. And what they'll do is they'll each take an interesting fact they learned during the week, uh, bring it onto the show, and they'll talk about it. it. Very, very informative and very funny. It's very, it's, it's a, it's a fun listen to. And it's, you learn interesting things you might not have been, been aware of. Uh, let's see what else. The regular ones. Uh, I mentioned the Super Best Friends on YouTube. They have their own podcast called the Super Best Friend Cast. If it, this, it's very much they'll they'll talk about other things, but it's very much video game oriented uh, about the industry and if, and they're really into fighting games and stuff like that. So it's like depending on what's happening in video games, the podcast might get more into minutia than you might like. But they regularly go for three to four hours just uh, just covering stuff. And uh, the last thing I want to mention. I didn't. I didn't put it in my top three because I don't listen to it a lot. But when I do, it always makes me. I want. I'm gonna giggle. say giggle like a schoolgirl, like like a crazy person. This is like something. A no. <laughs> it it never. And at the very least, it always puts a smile on my face. I found this. I can't remember where, but uh, I think it was done via. I, I don't remember how I stumbled upon it, but uh, I'm. I'm just gonna spell this out. Uh, there is a uh, an, an account on Bandcamp called Aberrant Kenosis, A-B-E-R-R-A-N-T-K-E-N-O-S-I-S dot Bandcamp dot com. There are four albums on that page. There Did you are, join a cult? No. Okay. There are four albums on that page. They're all free. They are all covers of songs made with only bike horn middies. Oh my God. I have played them for you before. I remember yes. I did this. <laughs> There's so much love and work put into these dumb songs. 
and they're it's like and you listen to it and it's it's for some people i'm sure it's terrible to listen to it's 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 a cacophony of bike horns <laughs> but it's well mastered that sounds that are sounds like my well? personal hell they are tuned well right. they are <laughs> that's the thing that's that's something that's like a secret love of mine it's like something that is that is so much work put into something terrible. And you can tell there's been a level of detail and care put into this. <laughs> I thought you were just going to say bike horns were one of your secret loves. No, no. It's just, so I, whenever I do feel bike down, horns. whenever, I, <laughs> whenever I do feel down and I play this, I just, I start smiling and I laugh because it's just ridiculous. And I just, I love it. I can't, I can't give a logical reason to enjoy it. Well, but what I got out of that is I'm buying you a bike horn for Christmas. No, you're not. That I might get you one. Too. I can't make music for shit. Because you, then you'll have two that you can like, you know, tune. Beat and you over the head with chorus. All um, right, uh, uh, stereo. Well, that Michael. is our feel good episode. Thank you guys. <laughs> better close I feel out. So he's good. gonna keep talking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, he's worrying <laughs> me. Oh, uh, if you would. Thank you, Stan and Chris. Thank you to all of our listeners. You thanked us. Yeah, if you enjoyed the show, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review. Call and me. also check out our sister show, This Is A Work, a wrestling podcast hosted by David Two Dogs Hayes. If you want to check out more about Long Walk Productions, you can find us online at longwalk.us. And if you want to search us out on Facebook, you can find us at facebook.com slash longwalkpro. We would appreciate your feedback. Yes, we would. So we hope you enjoyed the episode, and we will be back in two weeks. Peace out. See ya.